basically SAF is going to be incredibly uh, important. And by that, I think uh, we accept now that SAF will need to play the major role in the decarbonisation journey to, to 2050. So putting, perhaps putting some numbers and context around that, uh, we, we expect SAF you know, may need to provide uh, uh, around 450 billion litres of our, our energy, our jet fuel uh, energy, which is ac actually more jet fuel than was even used in 2019. So percentage-wise, it could be, let's say, 60 to 70, 80%, perhaps, at an upper bound of all of the jet fuel that we'll use. We're starting you know, at, at ground floor. Um, SAF is a relatively new industry. There's been tremendous work that's gone on in the past decade to set the platform for you know, a rapid increase in what we're doing. So a lot, lot of that's been the less sexy uh, you know, numbers, if I call it that. It's the technical side of making sure it's safe and now we're ready to grow. So right now we're at about 100, 100 million litres. So 100 million, not billion. So we, you know, we, we're needing uh, multiples uh, above where we're at today. It's feasible. Uh, we shouldn't, you know, I don't sit here and, and say it's just a walk in the park and there's nothing to do. It, it is incredibly difficult. It will be one of the major, I think, decarbonisation achievements of, of this century uh, to, to do this, but it is possible. And we've done really thorough work on understanding, you know, how do you essentially solve this problem? It's a, it's a question of technology and feedstock and then uh, finding the actual capital to develop th this industry. But that can be done, it can be solved, uh, but it's going to take a tremendous amount of coordinated work. There are a number. Um, there's getting our hands on the feedstock that we need and, and the sustainable feedstock, that's key. We're, we're not going to use something that's not uh, sustainable. So there are other industries interested as well, but we have one of the greatest um, decarbonisation challenges. So we're starting to see policy move in the right direction to you know, recognise that aviation should have a priority uh, over that. But then we need to do the investing in building. You know, so this is developing a, a new industry at huge scale. So we need to start to see these new um, production facilities come online at a rapid pace you know, many, many facilities each year uh, from say 20, 2030. So that's going to be, I think, the biggest challenge of really getting that momentum and maintaining it right sort of through 2030 to 2050. Firstly, if we think of where we're at today, you know, that 100 million litres is an impressive number coming from zero quite quickly, but it's still a fraction of our, our jet fuel demand, it's less than, well less than 1%, well less. So I would like to think that we could be on a trajectory towards 2% globally by 2025. And then by, by the end of this decade, I'd like to think that uh, it may not be perfectly synchronised around the world, but if we do the global aggregate, we could be around 5%. And then I think we're going to see a really sharp sort of trajectory going up. Uh, 2030 to 2040, and then again 2040 to 2050. For us to get there all in a, in a collective sense, it will really you know, rely on everybody, but the fuel producers have a big, a big role in this. I mean, they are the experts at developing our energy infrastructure uh, to, to provide the, the fuel. What we've seen so far has been more boutique uh, sort of new energy suppliers making the, the SAF, and that's terrific. I mean, that, that, that has been the innovation that's got us to where we are today. But I think we're going to get this big boost coming in almost now, I'm starting to see it already, from the traditional energy sector, leveraging their uh, experience of, you know, 100 years of basically being able to provide liquid fuel to the world. And they have the capital and the balance sheets to really do that. They are going to be essential that it's not just one or two of the major energy suppliers, we'll need all of them. Uh, big opportunity for them as well to, uh, to really transition their business to a, a sustainable, financially sustainable business into their, their future also. Governments are, I think, are almost as vital. Um, 
so, so we have a, a term in economics of the valley of death, and that's where um, you know there may not be the economic uh, business case to be doing a sort of a mass scale uh, development, particularly when technology is newer, um, there isn't the experience to, to draw on, perhaps to get attractive lending and whatnot. Governments have a role to step in and sort of get us across that valley of death while there might be a, a uh, price challenge or an, e an economic challenge. That's where governments need innovative uh, policy. They need to provide the policy in any, any sort of form. It's, so it's providing support to the business case. And there's a huge array of different policy options there from um, you know, providing uh, feedstock incentives, providing uh, tax credits, all of these sorts of things uh, that can get us across this period. It's not, f it's not forever. Policy support uh, will taper off once this becomes an industry that is actually standing on its own feet. And that will happen. We think that can happen very early in the 2030s.